he says, well, you know, what cup is it? And he starts to, you know, shuffle the, the, the cups. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, what's happening is something like this at the Apache level, because there's the story of uh, Apache saying yes to a software grant coming from Oracle with the official approbation of IBM. And that software grant is about the open office code base. Until that point, things tend to be quite clear, uh, were it only, of course, for the elephant in the room, which is LibreOffice. Okay. It's now, downstream? Sorry? Is it working? Is it still working downstream from OpenOffice to an extent? Um, no. Downstream. Well, you read well, right from the. Yeah, well, yeah, because they had to, basically what happened was there's that software grant and then Apache has to basically, uh, relicense stuff and, 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 and all that. Oh, if it's your licensing, can you still backport all the features and work and share code among the projects? As uh, yes, but but where it, where it is really simple is that in fact we, I mean by we I mean Apache Open Office and LibreOffice, we don't call upon Oracle to do anything anymore. It's mm-hmm. it's basically there's like the only direction is uh, because we want it and that's LibreOffice. It's Apache Open Office. In the sense that we are rebasing ourselves to Apache Open Office, to a specific version of Apache Open Office, because uh, we LibreOffice, we the Document Foundation, inherited a situation where uh, the Open Office code base, as in Oracle, uh, you know, Oracle Times, Open Office mm-hmm. was licensed under LGPL v3. Mm-hmm. Now it's a great license. I would just love to have that little plus that comes next to it. And in fact, we also have other licenses such as the GPL v3 plus and we have the MPL v2, you know, and that and so and all this is something that we can't do uh, precisely because of the specific license LGPL v3 without anything uh, and without any grant from Oracle. So that means that essentially we can't relicense it uh, the way we sort of want to. So we need to rebase our, our code on, you know, the, the, the software grant that Oracle gave to Apache. Uh-huh. So what this means is that we take that Apache license v2 code and we basically say, because, you know, there are uh, the appropriate and legal transitions that we can do from one license to another, we say, okay, now what we received well, we're going to release it under GPLv3 plus and, uh, Apa- uh, sorry, not Apache, <laughs> uh, and, um, uh, MPLv2. That's what we do. And what we also did before since day one is that we said, okay, we're going to ask every new contributions and every new contributor, you know, you're not going to have to sign any copyright agreement, but what we're going to ask you is that whether you accept to release your changes under GPL v3 plus and MPL v2. Yeah. If I recall, so, just, just remind listeners, I, if I recall correctly, the MPL is slightly kind of BSD like in the sense that the, there is the ability to proprietorize the code and the. No, no, but what it, it, you have to think of the MPL v2, v2 being different from the v1. Uh, but the v2 basically is not, is precisely, it has stopped being that BSD style. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what it, let's say, you have to think of the MPLv2 as an easier way to understand the LGPLv3. Mm-hmm. Basically what it says is that it draws the line at some point. It says, okay, MPL, there's, there's, there's that things that where you want to link. And if you want to proprietorize what you're linking to, you can. But the core basically stays very much free software, and you can't proprietorize that. Yeah. So MPL should never be understood as some sort of a, an Apache-style license or a BSD-style license. Mm-hmm. It's what we call weak copyleft, in the sense that it gives you that flexibility that on the rims, basically, on the borders of the software, you can actually proprietize some bits. Mm-hmm. Um, but But... That allows us, that is the, the transition that is, we're using this in, to, to basically, uh, turn the Apache code into GPL code. Mm-hmm. Because there is, this is compatible, basically. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, that, that's the reason. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not really a lawyer or an expert with licenses, and I suppose, uh, well, because I, I always publish my code under the GPL, all my projects, and, uh, but I, I one, of, one of the things I was told before is the CDDL. Mm-hmm. Sun was in fact created, I think, by Denise Cooper. Yeah. And, uh, and it was made deliberately incompatible with the GPL in some extent, to some degree. It was made very problematic for the true kind of copyleft licenses, I believe. Actually, uh, I should mention Denise Cooper. I, I don't have, I, I, I've heard from friends of mine, my trust, that she isn't to be seen as very much uh, an open source diva, so to speak, even though she was on the OSI. And right mm-hmm. now she works for Bill Gates as well, which is a different kind of distrusting kind of thing. But um, and and uh, the CDDL, I I think it caused some some issues that some people, especially on the strong copyright side, uh, are be hostile to. And and also in, speaking of hostility, it does seem as though I, I don't mean to be um, presumptuous here, but it seems to me like IBM is not a big fan of. LibreOffice because I see Robert Rob Weir in a very gentle sort of way makes those snide remarks that you know guys from LibreOffice he doesn't seem to be very happy with the project existing. Um, um, well, you know, let, let me let me put that in in, in perspective. So I don't know uh, the, the the CDDL thing and, and Denise. I know Denise, but I think the CDL was an interesting experiment and and somehow. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, it wasn't. It never really gained traction for some reason. I never, honestly, I, I never really studied the, the case to what was going on with the CDL. But um, just to you know, talk about you know your, your question to answer your question, and perhaps you also answer to the end of your question on the symphony. Uh, so basically, what's going on is that there has been that software grant made by Oracle to Apache, and it's called Open Office. And in the end, like after uh, what a, a, a year of releasing the former beta version of OpenOffice and make it its stable, I mean that's what they did. And then they re- they changed the headers, you know. Do, that's what they did. Well, now they're saying, oh, um, hey, we have the Symphony code we'd like to open source. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aha. Yeah. So uh, I've, I've it's like right. yeah. you basically going to uh, to buy a car, and they tell you you're gonna have that great car. You live in England, Roy, and so you basically want to buy a Ford. And at the end of the process, when you're out of the store, out of the same store, they made you go by a different exit. You end up with a Vauxhall, mm-hmm. and you yeah. will like what whatever did happen. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> So I think I think for you know uh, I'm not trying to say in fact that this is a bad idea. I mm-hmm. think this might actually be a good idea. But yeah. I'm just questioning. I mean, you know, we're in 2012. Um, I think the era of corporate controlled uh, projects is over. And I think that when you have this lack of diversity of contributors inside the Apache Open Office project, yeah. I think I th- this is not going anywhere. I cannot say I agree with you. I'm thinking about Chrome. I'm thinking about Android. I'm thinking about all sorts of other projects, even Mozilla to an extent, even though it's declining somewhat. Uh, it's still a corporate. Uh, Mozilla is a foundation, so I'll give them some slack. But I mean, some of the fast-growing browsers are controlled by very large, very extremely large corporations, and yeah. Android as well. So, yeah, but... so we we tend to forget these are supposedly open source. I don't believe them to be very open source. You think they do this? They have this charade like open source and stuff, and they kind of do an open something. And nobody can really compile the code unless they have like this huge amount of RAM. To, nobody really can fork out of it and, and really gain traction as a as a fork. But the fact is, I, I do think that the corporations actually do take over a lot of the open source processes. VMware has been buying some of the companies that used to. Uh, be independent uh, ISVs and stuff with the open source business. I, I, I do think either either many of those companies die out or get acquired, maybe for nothing. Maybe they basically just pretend that they've been acquired successfully and in practice they get almost nothing. They just kind of pretend to die peacefully inside some company. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that I think happens with the open office, with whatever was happening with Sun, and I, I believe Sun was more open with the processes and more open to contributions, more like yeah. LibreOffice is now. It seems to me, based on what I've researched of 
come across. It's lovely work being done on uh, what's you know the Apache Open Office now. It's just basically IBM in disguise, basically just oh, yeah. converting the thing and using.